What's up YouTube? Tyler here and in today's video we are going to be covering this mic here we go the JavaScript syntax covering objects and we should start on the first um, draw a blank now the first project which is called the meal maker so I'm rocking my uh, knockoff Chinese NFL hoodie Dallas Cowboys because we're going to the bowl baby all right let's get back to reality and we're gonna start off with the quiz and then we'll jump into the the meal maker and this damn mic I'll tell you I don't know where to put it all right here we go which line of code would not print the value saved to the underscore num key in the temp object give a little heads up right now guys objects has been a a big learner for me so you know I'm going for I'm going for 100 but just be prepared okay all right which line of code would not print the value saved to the underscore num key in the temp object okay console.log we want to show number 22 Mm -hmm. Oh, which would not print the value. Ooh, ooh, okay. Mm. Yikes, yikes. Why am I making this so hard? Hard. Get in the zone. Get in the zone. Console.log Tim object num. I'm wrong. Since we wrote a getter, we can use regular access notation. Temp dot dot ten ten ten. Temp object. Get out of here, Angel. We don't need you. Temp object dot num would print twenty two. Um. Yeah, that was dumb. Since this one is the one that went right, because console.log temp obj dot num method return this number. Okay. Um, I'm a little confused on that one. If you know why it's this one, let me know in the comments below. All right. Not missing any more. Which of the following is an example of destruction of a of destructed assignment. Oh man, destructed. Okay. Destructed, destructed, destructed. Oh, buddy. Okay, that's just assigning name to my dog's name tadpole. That's a that's a funny name for a dog. Let name equal my dog. Let's set a name, the object name. I th Ooh, man. All right, boys. Maybe girls. Um, yikes. I'm not feeling good about objects, but we're going to keep pushing through and we're going we're gonna to do great. I'm pretty sure it's one of these two, right? So we got let name equals my dog. So that would assign the name of my dog to this, right? Correct. Using ES6 destructed assignment, we can use this syntax to create a variable name with a value of my dog's name property. Okay. Should have taken this quiz yesterday, but I'm kind of glad I didn't. Because now we see how much I forgot. Which of the following statements is correct? Objects only store strings. Objects can't store other objects. Objects store data in numbered positions. Objects store unordered data of any type as key value pairs. Boom! Correct. What is a method? 
A method is a function that takes an object as its parameter. A method is a general term used to describe how to create objects. A method is a property with a function as its value. Ooh. It's A or C, right? B is out of the question. A method is a property with a function as its value. Well, when we do, when we perform a method, right, it's performing something. However, a method is a function that takes an object as its parameter. A method is a function that takes an object as its parameter. Bam! A method is property with a function as its value. Yeah. Yeah, that's damn right. What's wrong with setter method in the example below? Um, let temp object equal this, num 22, we got our comma there, set num, our parameter is going to be num in, and underscore num is going to equal num in. setter in well, there's nothing wrong with this method the setter input argument should be called num that's yeah no I should have kept reading the correct answer is that the setter should contain this dot underscore num in the place of num the num key should not have an underscore in it the setter should contain this dot num in the place of underscore num. The setter should contain this dot underscore num in place of underscore num. This dot underscore num is equal to num in. Oh, because we have to go back out to here. That's right. Okay, given the following code, which expression will evaluate to apples? Come on, be an easy one, man. I need a win right now. Given the following code, which expression will evaluate to apples? Const refrigerator equals dairy. Where the hell is apples? Right here. All right. So we have to access... The fruit, right? Um, dairy is that. Temperature that. Produce drawer. We are inside of our produce drawer, huh? Yeah. So we got refrigerator dot on dot we have to use our brackets here produce drawer dot fruit to access this one zero index boom correct refrigerator produce 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 drawer will evaluate to the object containing the fruit key which holds an array at the zeroth index of an array is apples how can we call the method in the code below let my object equal, say hello, return hello there. How can we call the method in the code below? Okay, so we have to call my object, right? And we have to do this one here, right? Bam! So we have my object. Right, and then we want it to do the method say hello, and then when this is called, this will it will return hello there. Which of the following object methods can be used to copy all the properties of an object into a new object? A sign, right? Bam. 
Remember we had to do that one with the robot last time? We had uh, a robot that didn't have a laser blaster. So then we copied all of the old robot's properties and assigned it to new robot. But this robot had all the old properties and a laser blaster. What should we add to the empty dot with discount method to return the cost of the meatballs object with a $2 discount? Let me read it again. What should we add to the empty with discount method to return the cost of the meatballs object with a $2 discount? Let meatballs equal cost five with discount. Mm, this cost minus, oh, we gotta return it though, right? So it's gonna be return this cost minus two. And I believe it's we use this one over this one here because we are inside of with discount. So we don't have access to cost. But if we use <laughs> this keyword, <laughs> this, we can then access our cost. Let me see if I'm right. Hell yeah. All right. Which is the correct syntax for creating an object literal? Let my object equal brackets, curly braces. An object literal reading equals hello. Okay, it's not an equal sign. It definitely has this here. And it has this here, it's gonna be this one. Correct, all right, so this one is not correct because it does not have the colon. This one is not correct because it doesn't set your it doesn't set my object equal to what's ever inside of here. This one is not correct because it doesn't have the equal sign up here and it doesn't have the semicolons down here. I'm a genius. What is a factory function? Okay, a function that takes an object as an argument and then modifies it, modifies it. A function that returns an object, a function that returns an array of objects. Yikes, yikes, man. So we did this for the monster, right? Hmm. No, how did that work exactly? function that takes an object as an argument and then modifies it. What is a factory function? A function that takes an object as an argument and then modifies it. It's going to be A or C, a function that returns an array of objects. I'm pretty sure it's A. No, oh, it's B? What the hell? A factory function is a function that returns a new object, not one that modifies an existing object. A factory function is a function that returns a new object, but not one that modifies an existing object. Okay. So I knew it returned an object, right? But I thought we were returning it to add something to it. I guess it's, since it's not modifying, it's just adding to it, a function that returns an object. Okay. I think this uh, code challenge is gonna be real pain in the butt, but I think we're gonna learn a lot. So let's just keep grinding. What will the following code output? Const car equals num doors four is dirty true color red for let oh man I forgot how this worked too for let key in car console.log key okay um pretty sure this is a for loop we're letting key
car. Console.log key. felt like I've kind of just, for the most part, glided through what we'd learned so far. And now, I'm struggling with objects. I'm struggling with all the new syntax that I've learned. This is a for loop, right? Let key in car. Key is our passing in car cons car equals num of doors is dirty and true color red the console dot log key code will iterate through the car object and print each key, not the key's value. So that makes sense there. That's kind of what I was thinking in my head, but I was like, oh, if we console.log the object, it's going to give us the, the values um, for true and red. But we're doing the key because it's a key value pair, right? So it's a key value Error. All right. Listen, a 60% and up is passing as long as it's not a prerequisite. Pretty simple, right? How can we add a property to the object below? Let bikes equal this, this. All right, how do we add an object? How do we add a property to the object below? Mm. Bikes dot specialized equals red. Good job. We could accomplish the same thing using the dot notation. Bike dot specialized. Nope, not that one. Not that one. But specialized equals red. Okay. Okay. What are the keys in this object? Coffee maker, ceiling fan, books. Coffee maker, ceiling fan, books. Hell yeah. All right. Remember, when you see the score, 60% and up is passing, okay? Anything above 60% is overachieving. Overachiever, right here, 71%. What's up? All right, what do we got? Uh, JavaScript jQuery chapter 3 5 out of 6 days running great freaking job um, page 100-117 I've read this awesome book um, kind of gets you familiar with what you're doing before I've talked about this in several videos before so I'm just not even going to say anything um, yeah moving on here we go here we go where the big boys play right here in the meal maker. Whew. All right. Meal maker. As a frequent diner, you love trying out new restaurants and experimenting with different foods. However, having to figure out what you want to order can be a time-consuming ordeal. If the menu is big and you want an easier way to be able to figure out what you are going to eat, in this project, You'll use JavaScript to randomly create a three-course meal based on what is available on the menu. We'll keep running it until we're satisfied with the generated meal. If you get stuck during the project, we ain't getting stuck. Who are you talking to? 
All right. <laughs> we're going to get stuck, guys. Start. No, we're not. No, we're not. Start by creating an empty menu object. All right. So we got uh, let menu equal this. Right? That's our object. Hopefully. Add courses property to your menu. Okay, so we're going to add a courses. And set its value to an empty object. Okay. This property will ultimately contain a mapping between each course and the dishes available to that course. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. Create three properties inside the courses object called appetizers. Appetizers. Um. Um, we're not setting it equal to anything. We're just going to put a comma here just so we don't forget later. Mains. I need to get my confidence up right now. I am not feeling like I'm ready for this. Whew. Let's go. All right. Each one of these should initialize, initialize to an empty array. To an empty array. Okay. There's an array. There's an empty array. There's another empty array. Create getter and setter methods for the appetizers, mains, and desserts properties. Hmm. Now, or do the getters belong on the outside of this? You hear me? You hear what I'm saying? I'm opening up. MDN. It's not cheating. Using my resources. Um, MDN. MDN. I'm going to bring MDN on down here. All right, we're going to get that right there. And I'm going to get my OBS pulled back up so I can see myself for some reason. All right, so now check it out. We're going to do getter and we're going to get into getter right here. The get syntax binds an object property to a function that will be called when a property is looked up. All right, so we got an object here. Get something. And is it's inside the object, but it's not. Yeah. Okay, so I think it goes. Man, I don't know. We're just going to put it on the outside of it. I don't know why, but that's what I'm doing. Get. Smart self overriding lazy getters. Getters give you a way to define a property of an object, but they do not calculate the property's value until it is accessed. A getter define defers the cost of calculating the value until the value is needed. 
If it is never needed, you never pay the cost. All right, guys, we're getting through this. We are getting through this. Get. Now we have to get, create getter and setter methods for the appetizers, mains, and desserts. What's kind of throwing me off here, I don't exactly remember how getters work. Also don't exactly remember how setters work. And I don't remember the underscore of the variable, right? Which one we're wanting to use. So create getter and setter methods. For, okay, so if we just set, what's a, how we do a setter now? Setter's like this exact same, right? Because right? they're both. I don't know. Let's just get right in. Get appetizers like so, right? And it has to do something like that. Okay, and then we're going to do get mains. Can't see that dang thing there. Get mains. And then we'll do that. We'll do this. And then we're going to do get desserts. We'll do that, we'll do this, and we're coders. All right. Oh, we gotta do setters too, huh? Yowza. Right now, I'm just typing things out, and <laughs> yep, that's all the advice I have. If anybody watches this video, please Comment and let me know what getters and setters are actually doing, right? In English, broken down, Barney style. That would be very helpful. All right, create getter and setter methods for the appetizers, mains, and desserts properties. Yeah, I think I did that. Inside your menu object, create an empty getter method for the courses. Inside your menu object, create an empty getter method. For the courses property. I wonder if these were all supposed to be inside of here. Create three properties inside the courses called appetizers main which means they should be initialized. Create Getter and setter methods for the appetizers, mains, and dessert properties. Okay. Inside your menu, create an empty getter method. Get Courses Maybe that's 
right? Inside the courses getter method here. Wait, no. Why doesn't this have an underline? Inside the courses getter method, return an object that contains key value pairs for app. Okay, so inside the courses getter method. Maybe. Return an object that contains key value pairs for Appetizers, mains, and desserts. Return. How do we do with key value pairs now? I don't remember. Return. Key value yeah. Key value pairs I guess I'm like that, come on Changes anything? I don't think it does. No. Um, object. Yeah, let's go to keys and then we'll look at what values is. Object dot keys method returns an array of given objects own numerable properties names iterated in the same order that a normal loop would. Cons object. I don't think we want an array, right? Return an object. Where the heck did this come from? Um, what other ones have we got here? We did return object. Nah, nah, nah. Let's find it here. Um, values turns an array. Oh, no, create. Object.create method creates a new object using an existing object as a prototype of the newly created object. Inside the courses getter method return an object that contains key value pairs for appetizers, mains, and desserts. Do we want to create a whole new object though? Let's see what else we got here. Object from entries method transforms a list of key value pairs into an object. Inside the courses getter method, return an object that contains. That kind of makes sense to me, right? 
we're going to go with it. Return object dot from entries. We probably need to put like We don't want all the menu though, right? We just want what's in courses. I think we're gonna get lots of errors here. <laughs> um, where are we getting our first error? Get appetizers, and we're getting it right stinking here. All right, guys. Unfortunately, I am just not feeling very comfortable with this right now. We have two. projects that we have to do in with objects and I'm just not feeling like I'm going in the right direction so I'm going to start doing hints to verify that I'm going correctly and if I can't get enough off the hint then I'm going to watch part of the video in order to get it I don't think it's beneficial to sit here and stare at something and not really know where you're going I think it's important to try and to understand what's going on but it's a waste of time that I could be using to learn if I'm just staring at something. And I, I kind of only allocate an hour a day to this, so I need to get as much out of it as I can. All right, so it wants to just use const. Okay, that's, that's fair, right? Const k okay. courses. Yep, we did that one, right? Create the three properties inside. Did that one good too, right? Appetizers, mains, desserts. Okay, now, did we stay inside of... No, we did not. Get appetizers right here, right? Maybe we did. So where, where's this one at? That one's at the very bottom. Do we not have? Does this change? That changes things, right? We're still getting an error at get mains right here now, but that's because I don't have this there, that there. That there, that there, that there, that there. Well, that was extremely helpful already. Now we're at set appetizers. Your sounds like there's a moth in there or something. So set appetizers. Is it because we don't have something in us inside of our appetizers? Appetizers. Spelled right, okay. Create a getter and setter method for the appetizers, mains, and desserts. What is this? Setter must have exactly one formal parameter. Okay. So I guess we can just do appetizers in for this, yeah? Appetizer in. Mains in desserts, desserts in like that. All right, cool. We are smooth sailing so far. 
minor mistakes, but mistakes nonetheless. Inside your menu object, create an empty getter method for the course's property. Get, wait, it does not want us to use the underscore here. Okay. Because we're using get, right? Because we don't want to access the underscore or something like that. I don't remember. But that was kind of like the key that we're using the underscore for. I need to learn that again. Um, get courses. Cool, cool. Return, yes. I think, well, I don't know about yes, but. <laughs> Inside the courses getter method, return an object that contains key value pairs for appetizers, mains, and desserts. Return an object with the properties for appetizers, mains, and desserts. The example below shows how to create an object that contains an array. This uses the appetizer getter method. Oh, okay. So we'll say, oh yeah, because we have to return an object. That's right, so if we're returning an object, we have to make sure that we still have the, the curly braces as the object, right? Because we're returning an object. So now the object that we want to return is that we can access the appetizers, right? Appetizers. This dot appetizers. We should have to do this for each one, right? Mains, this, mains, and desserts, this dot main, no. Okay, just see if we got any errors coming out yet, nope. Good, good. Inside the menu object. Let's say went crazy spaced out. They got crazy spaces in this stuff. I guess so, yeah. Inside the menu object, we are going to create a method called dot add dish. So inside the menu object. Um Maybe this one should be just up here, huh? That might make more sense. We're going to add. We're going to create a method called add dish to course this, right? Which will use which will be used to add a new dish to this specified course on the menu. The message the method should take in three parameters: course name, dish name, and dish price. Okay. The add dish to course method should create an object should create an object called dish, which has a name and price which it gets from the parameters. 
I can tell you I'm gonna go back through uh, the objects course both of them the advanced and the normal one um, to just to try to get a better grasp on it because I I'm not feeling very confident with any of this stuff yet dot add dish to course method should create an object called dish which has a name and price which it gets from the parameters the method should then push this dish object into the appropriate array in your menu's course in your menu's courses object based on what course name was passed in okay you should create an object called dish which has a name and price wait dish name probably better than <laughs> um, the message the method should create an object called dish which has a name and price which it gets from the parameters um, dish name dish name yes it looks good all right then we're gonna go to price oh I did this wrong name should be dish name and this should be price and this will be dish price like so dot add dish to course method should create an object called dish which has a name and price which it gets from the parameters. Okay, the method should then push this dish object into the appropriate array in your menus underscore courses object on what course name was passed in. This method should then push. I don't remember how to do that either. This message should <laughs> read it 600 times, guys. I'm sorry. This, the method should then push this dish object into the appropriate array in your menu's courses object based on what course name was passed in. Okay, so how do we push this into I got like anything in here? Um this one what's our source here oh it's this one here so console.log target we get a one b
turned. Okay, that's this one here. I think we're gonna do object dot assign. Um, let's, let's make sure this one looks good. Add dish to course, course name, yada, yada. Yep, okay. Now, this one here. Nope, you're not using that one. <laughs> okay. We did that. Now we're going to do, this is the, also try using your setter method. So this dot courses okay so this is going to take in our parameter course name right there why it's staying that color I don't know and then we're going to push that to dish do we have any errors Yes, right here. Why is this all the same color still? That doesn't change it though. This dot courses, because we have to come back out here, right? sure everything is exactly the same it looks like it is but hmm. Okay, we don't want this in dish. We want this outside of dish. Syntax error underscore courses. That should not. Yeah, we should it in there. Yes, because menu is the big one, right? Where is this air coming from? Underscore courses. Right here, this is where it's coming from. Well, probably because... This dot courses is now giving me an issue. If that one goes away. Okay, why are we not adding a a comma after this end here? But we have to do it everywhere else. We add it here, we just don't have to add it here for some reason. Oh man, that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. Now we're going to need another function which will allow us to get a random dish from a course on the menu, which will be necessary for generating random for generating a random meal. Create a method inside the menu object called get random dish from course. 
it will take in one parameter which is the course name all right so we're going to create a method inside the menu called get random dish from course get random dish from course this is probably gonna have to have one of these right and this is gonna take in one parameter which is the course name okay Okay, no errors. 10, there are a few steps in getting the get random dish course to work. We're close to being done. But, doesn't mean I learned a whole lot from this, to be honest. There are a few steps in getting the get random dish course. Okay, retrieve the array. Let's make sure I did this one right, all right? Yes. There are a few steps again to get then to work. Retrieve the array of the given of the given courses dishes from the menu courses objects and store in a variable called dishes. Retrieve the array of the given courses dishes. So here and a and store in a valuable in a valuable in a variable called dishes does this have to be inside of here or is this going to be outside of this thing i'm just going to look at the hints here guys so we're going to do this inside. Get random dish from course. We'll say const dishes is equal to this dot course underscore courses this course name and that then we'll do another cons random index equals math dot floor math dot random this this dishes dot length So let's what the, what's this doing? It's creating a variable dishes that is equal to this courses here maybe courses name I I'm lost guys uh yeah pretty lost. I'm definitely gonna finish this and then I'm going to on my own time not on your time I'm gonna go back in and redo the objects course and then redo this and then do the second challenge I think okay do we have any I think I might need to return dish located at that index. Return mm -hmm. 
random index. Random index. Is that right? Hope so. Return that dish located at that index in dishes. I think this would be right. Now that we have a way to get random dishes from a course, we can create a generate random meal function, which will automatically generate a three course meal for us. The function doesn't need to take any parameters. The function should create an appetizer variable, which should be all right. We're just gonna go, we're gonna do this to get the, uh, to get it done and try to understand what's going on but that's it all right so we're going to const menu and then we're going to create a get random meal looks that way huh generate i think i'm just going to copy it here well no i'm not generate random meal Set that equal, well, we'll just do, we'll do this way, I like it better. Const appetizer equals this dot gets random dish from course and we'll do appetizer in here appetizers and this should be the same for the other ones but control copy we will do mains and dessert And then we're returning your meal is appetizer dot name main dot name the price is dollar dollar because we have to And total price, total price. And that there. Now, how many years we got? That's good. We haven't done anything with total price though. Make sure to pass in the right course type. Calculates the total price and returns a string that contains the name of each of the dishes and the total price of the meal. Format it as you like. total price place either right like how are we well let's just move on all right just keep going through it now that we've finished our menu object let's use it to create a menu by adding some appetizers mains and desserts with the add dish function add at least three dishes to each course 
Okay. So, appetizers, Caesar salad. This is the price. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. We're going to go appetizers, appetizers. So we're going to do fish sticks, right? That's always a disgusting one to get. Um, South Western egg rolls. Just change the price of all this. So, right, we're going to do, we're just going to go up in price. 525 and 625 okay so now we're gonna hit over to mains so we've stuffed our face enough we're gonna do bacon cheese burger yeah ribeye yeah well should be a good main hmm crab legs okay our our mains are a little more expensive, right? But them crab legs, those are the real big spinner right there. All right, now we're at our desserts. 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 Mmm. Chocolate cake that's another one good that was molten lava cakes are really good too huh molten lava cake and then last cheese cake Nine twenty-five. Okay. Once your menu has items inside it, generate a meal by using the. Generate random meal. Generate. On your menu, so we should say menu. Dot. Generate. random meal and save it to a variable and save it to a variable called meal lastly print out your print out your meal variable to see what the meal will generate for you okay so we'll All right, moment of truth, does it work? Nope. <laughs> um, where are we getting messed up here at? Appetizer, name, return your meal is, here's where we're getting messed up, bro. Main is not defined. Total price is not defined. It sure isn't. Um,
What if? Control copy. Let's get rid of this. Yowza. Let's see if we work. Your meal is undefined. The price is. Isn't that what we wanted to be there? Where's that one at? Oh, we forgot to do this one right here. So let's uh, control Z. There we go. We need to do cons total price is equal to appetizer dot price plus um, mains dot price plus desserts dot price and finish that up there your meal is undefined undefined the price is not a number Okay. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Hmm. Unfortunate, guys. Unfortunate. We're not having much success with this. Okay, let's do a little quick recap. It's been an hour and 12 minutes. I was able to do the quiz, which scored a whopping 71% on. And I was unable to do the meal maker. Oh, man, that's... Still got like this damn moth in my ear. It sounds like, whew. all right. And I was able, unable to do the meal maker project. I'm just not. I'm just not confident enough with my my objects right now. I don't exactly know where things are going. Um. However, there was some plus sides to it, right? As I'm working, I am understanding what we're doing um at least for that piece of code right like here um how we're going to appetizer and how we're going out to find the price of it right same for mains and desserts um how we have to use this to get out of this one and to get into the random dish course into here so there's things that i am understanding had I not taken that objects course of those two lessons previously, I would have no idea what I'm doing really right now. Um, so I'd say I'm probably about like a 50% a knowledge on this right here, which isn't terrible, right? It's, it's definitely an improvement and that's what we're going for. So I don't think I'm going to redo, I don't know. I might redo the objects on here and I might not. Um, I just really need to take some time and focus on that. I can't expect to get to every uh, or every project and be able to do it first time without having to look back and reference things, right? Because we only went through objects and advanced objects once. Yes, we did some lessons in there, but it's going to take more more like repetitive um, action in order to, for those things to kind of stick in. So I think if I do it one 
maybe two more times, I'll be more confident and I can come back to this and feel more confident in knocking this out. And after doing it one or two more times, if I come here and I still need help, I'm okay with that, right? But it, I need to have more of an understanding of what I'm doing right now. Um, when I was reading through these steps, the first few of them, right, were I got right, but I'm not sure of the structure of it, right? So when we want to be inside of our Where do we want to be nested into it, right? We obviously want to be inside of our object, our main object. But then when we create methods in there and stuff like that, um, if we want to get out of it for to use getters and setters. And I'm also not very confident what getter and setters do. Um, I also still... I'm not comfortable with using the push function or push method, which we had to use right here. Um, I understand what it's doing, but until I see it and I couldn't come this up with this myself, right? Um, so I need to, I need to look more into that. Yeah, guys. I mean, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a great coding session at least for um, moving on to the next project. But it definitely showed me where I have lots of holes in my objects um, skills. So I'll just go back and, though, back and learn that again and fill those holes, come back to this. And that next time I should do better on this. And if I don't, well, then I start learning more about objects. I'm going to reread the object section in my book too the ones that they recommend on here, the one by John Duckett. And yeah, you know what? Actually, I'm going to redo objects on stream tomorrow. And I'm not going to focus on, I'm going to focus on me learning it. And if it, you know, if it's a boring thing to watch and it's a boring thing to watch, my goal is to like kind of show, well, there's a few things, right? By me coming in here and doing these videos, and talking through what I'm doing to you guys, it helps enforce what I learned. And then also on that, hopefully if you're watching these videos and you're going along in the same course, maybe I say something that you didn't quite understand and now you understand it better. Or there's several times when I'm going through here and I'm like, oh, I'm not really understanding this exactly if you guys would comment in the comments below of kind of breaking it down what I was doing wrong and what I could do better in this. Um, if you do that, make sure it's like, it's simple English. Okay. Don't make it complicated. I don't need any more complication. And then on top of that, I, I am a hundred percent confident that I'll get through this and that I'll be working as a, a web developer in the immediate future, maybe not, well, within the year, right? Within a year, not the year, a year. And being able to like show the steps that I did, I think will be beneficial for other people to actually show the work that's being done. You know, lots of times you go and watch these software development videos and you only see you see like their 10th chapter, right? They're already, what I mean by that, they're already so far along in their, their career that that's what you're seeing, right? You're not seeing all the chapters that came before that, you know, where they're learning everything that they did um, in order to get where they're at. And that's kind of what I want this to be. So yeah, all right guys, that's an hour and 20 minutes. I'm gonna get out.